Coming up on AgWeek TV, knowing the weather is vital to farmers, and North Dakota has one of the nation's best weather monitoring networks. I'm Michelle Rook. The cattle market has been surprisingly strong this fall. Will it continue? I'll have details coming up. We're in Castleton, North Dakota, where we'll see something about the challenges and rewards of being an ag educator. Welcome to AgWeek TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Weather is vitally important to farmers and thanks to technology, there are a lot of tools to keep a close eye on it. A Mesonet is an automated weather monitoring network and North Dakota has one of the best in the U.S. It's called Endon, or North Dakota Agricultural Weather Network. This one is bigger because it's measuring temperature and humidity. So it's really measuring between 10 and three, trying to have that boom height of where they're spraying and downwards, measuring the inversions, that density of the air, helping with potential spray drift problems. Endon started in 1989 with six sites. The sites were soon credited for saving the potato crop in 1993 by tracking the wet weather patterns and preventing disease. After that, other agricultural entities really discovered that, oh, it's benefit for this disease, that disease, and so then really in the mid to late 90s, Endon just blossomed. Now there are 91 Endon stations throughout North Dakota, Northwest Minnesota, and Eastern Montana. Other places will have it a mesonet, but it doesn't have the agricultural component as heavily invested as we do here. Interim Director of Endon, Daryl Richardson, says the sites serve multiple purposes. They're a weather risk management tool which can help forecast crop disease. This mesonet is located near Morton, North Dakota. Here we have soil moisture probes, which we have at numerous sites in the Red River Valley. So they really give you that profile, like how much moisture is there. But that's also used for flood forecasting now, which was never used in the past. Here we have deep soil probes that go over seven feet. So we know where that frost layer is in the spring for spring planting. Richardson says there are also probes down three to four inches to help indicate soil temperature for spring planting. One of the number one things that is requested uh, of me, especially by state and federal government agencies, is is there any way we could get a handle of how much precipitation is falling in the wintertime? This gauge is the start of that. Rain can vary a lot in a small area. But the other weather elements, you know, the inversions, the temperature, the wind, the tools, the humidity can be used generally um, from research 15 to 20 miles circle around each station. Those other tools are very useful. So you really don't need stations any closer than 20 miles. Eastern North Dakota, we're getting close to that. Richardson says there are some big gaps in Western North Dakota he'd like to see fill in. If people feel that they're in a unique area and want a station and are willing to support it for us, we're more than likely always going to be willing to add another station. Most of the sites are supported by large ag businesses in the state as well as individual farmers. I have some stations that are just sponsored by a group of farmers. They know that they really feel that they're going to get a cost benefit and I think almost always that they do. You can check out the weather information at endon.org. Despite building numbers in the nation's cattle herd, fed cattle and feeder cattle cash prices this fall have exceeded expectations. The live and feeder cattle futures also pushed to new contract high areas the beginning of November with deferred prices looking very positive for 2018. Michelle Rook reports this is good news for cattle producers after negative margins the last two years. The cattle market has been surprisingly strong this fall, especially for calves, which is bringing some optimism back into the industry. In fact, cow calf producers say prices for calves are substantially higher than last fall. Oh, you have calf prices now that are probably 20 to 40, some even kids, this is $50 a hundredweight higher than last year in some of them light cattle. There were also good profits in the feedlots the first part of 2017. There was some instances of five to six hundred dollar head profits and some of your strict hedgers were maybe down in that 200 to 250 dollars. And the strong feedlot closeouts are driving the demand for calves this fall in addition to strong packer margins and cheap feed. The only way to really try to get three, three and a quarter, half of this corn is going to have to try to feed it and that in turn has created quite a, quite a bit of demand for these calves. Packers right now are making about $175 and $185 a head, and that's sure a plus. The surprise has been the strength of the cattle market in the face of increasing herd numbers. 
and that's likely the function of strong demand. Our numbers are higher, they, according to reports, are higher than they were a year ago, and tonnage is up, but I, the demand, they seem to be able to get, uh, sell the products. So that's leaving many in the industry optimistic about the cattle market ahead. I'm pretty positive. Uh, I hate to be too bullish on things, but uh, uh, I know, you know last year how the spring got. It doesn't mean it's going to get that good again this spring, but it, it sure feels good. In South Dakota, I'm a Sherwick reporting for Ag Week. Cattle producers have been through some challenging times recently, and no one likes to lose money. But bigger isn't always better when it comes to picking profitable cows. That's the message from Chris Ringwall. He's a livestock specialist and director of the Extension Research Center at Dickinson. He's holding a series of smart beef seminars. Ringwall says ranchers may make more money if they follow the research into what makes a cow profitable. He says the natural tendency is to select bigger animals, but a bigger cow costs more to feed, eating into profits. It's something that's not simple, but we're trying to combine the concept of touching and seeing these cows and at the same time then looking at the data and then trying to see what what that means in terms of dollars and cents and our pocketbooks. Ringwall says their research shows the ideal size for profitability is between 1,200 and 1,300 pounds. Coming up next on Ag Week TV, ag lenders play a key role in helping farmers weather tough times. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. Superior Grain Equipment offers storage and drying solutions designed for your grain handling needs. Mixed flow grain dryers from Superior offer even heating to reduce heat stress cracking so you get higher quality grain, higher test weights, and better prices. Plus, they use half the energy of conventional screen dryers. Experience cost savings and Superior Grain Conditioning. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, more people can eat. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Make every minute of the growing season count. Schedule your equipment for a genuine Case IH parts and service uptime inspection at Titan Machinery. Our professional service technicians have the training and experience to pinpoint and repair problems before they have a chance to shut you down during the season. Avoid the high cost of in-season downtime. Give yourself the peace of mind knowing your equipment is ready to work. Schedule your equipment today by going to uptime18.com or calling your local Titan Machinery dealer. That's Titan Machinery, providing you with genuine Case IH parts and service. Many Upper Midwest producers have struggled through a challenging year. 2017 brought widespread drought, but experts say despite that, farmers and ranchers are hanging in there. Jonathan Knudsen has more. Bankers are an essential part of modern ag. About 90 area ag bankers are learning more from NDSU ag experts. We've had to weather a, you know, a significant price storm, so to speak. Andrew Swenson is NDSU Extension Farm Management Specialist. Though every farm is different, he thinks the worst overall may be over. Farmers have been helped by strong yields and lower costs. It's another tight year and it's going to vary a lot from 
producer to producer, you know, given their debt situation and stuff. But I think overall, you know, producers have reacted. They've really cut back on their capital purchases uh, from the numbers we've seen. Family living expenses have been shrinking. And so, you know, folks are, you know, weathering the storm the best they can. Egg banker Dan Paulson says high yields and good marketing will help many farmers this year, just as they did in 2016. You know, the commodity prices are down, which, which are going to affect the overall return to everyone. But uh, um, a lot of guys did some marketing, wish they'd have done some more, of course. But, uh, you know, the marketing and the high yields, again, probably are going to save the day, kind of just like last year in 16. Tim Petrie is NDSU Extension Livestock Marketing Specialist. He says cattle prices have rallied in the past year. That should help producers finish in the black, provided they don't have to buy a lot of feed because of drought. The much higher production cost this year and having to go a long ways for hay and so on is certainly going to impact those ranchers in western North Dakota and they aren't going to have as good a year even though prices are higher. 2017 has brought more financial challenges, but most farmers and ranchers continue to tough it out. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. One farm family has found itself in a long battle with the government after purchasing land for their ranch. Ramona Hage and her family have been in litigation with the U.S. Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management for nearly 40 years. Hage is the director of the Liberty and Property Rights Coalition. She says a year after her family bought a ranch in central Nevada, the government decided that they wanted that ranch for some other purpose. She says they set out to destroy her parents' family business with the terms and conditions they imposed on them. She says they've been in litigation with federal agencies ever since. I would argue that they have spent millions trying to destroy us when if they had come in and tried to buy the ranch, they might have been a little bit more successful. But, um, but that's what is happening with some of these administrative agencies is they either are running um, shakedown operations to try to extort money out of private businesses and private individuals or using their power without basis in law to destroy business and destroy property rights. The case is now at the U.S. Supreme Court in the U.S. Court of Federal Claims taking case and in a separate but related case, they're before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Parts of the region got a blast of winter this week. What's ahead? Your agri-weather forecast is next and later. We'll learn something about the challenges and rewards of being an ag educator. Midwest Bank knows the business of ag. That's where our roots are. We have a commitment to agriculture and believe in the farming families in our communities. We salute these doers. Your dedication to the land powered by financial resources is what gets things done, now and into the future. Turn to Midwest Bank where we understand farming and can keep you and your operation going strong. Doers, welcome. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. BotLink helps you quickly capture drone data, distribute it to trade tools, and respond to changing conditions in real time. 
Capture, process, and inspect aerial imagery from your fields to fix potential issues like flooding, nutrient deficiencies, or insect damage. Easily upload drone imagery to our cloud-based software to create valuable, high-definition maps that will help save you time and make smarter business decisions to save you money. It's sort of like the beginning of the holiday season almost. I mean, we're almost there. And let's, let's take a little assessment here at what the winter has done so far. Well, we are expecting a modest warm-up. But, you know, the, first, the last couple of weeks, northern North Dakota, northern Minnesota, winter is settled in. And I'm not confident this warm-up is going to be enough to really melt away all of that snow, although there will be some melting. Southern North Dakota, South Dakota, there have been a few dustings of snow maybe a few flurries down in Iowa, but it hasn't been such a big deal. For the most part, the snows across the upper Midwest have been small and scattered enough that it's not enough of a snowpack to really say the winter has begun. From northern North Dakota, Canadian border area northward, uh, winter is in for southern Canada. The question, I guess, on a lot of people's minds, then, it's been several years since we've really had an onset of winter by Thanksgiving season. Most of the last several years, it's kind of been a little later than that. This year, I think there's a chance that uh, winter will build back in. For the moment, it remains quite cold, although this week there will be a modest warming trend across the northern plains. And by this, I'm actually talking about, you know, as we go through the week, 30s and 40s North Dakota, 40s and 50s South Dakota. Cold air is not going very far far away because the jet stream is still going through the southern part of the country. Fairly significant cool down through the east. You'll, you'll hear lots of media this week talking about bitter Arctic cold in places like D.C., but it really won't be all that cold relative to what we've been experiencing. So locally, I am expecting the cold weather to drop back in by the end of the week. So we get a modest warm up with a little melting in northern North Dakota, but it's not long enough that the cold won't come back. Precip this week, not a lot. The west coast is getting wet. It'll stay that way. A little snow system will move out of the northern Canadian Rockies. That'll stay mostly in Canada, and it looks mostly light. There will be another system that'll break off the Pacific Northwest. That one, by the end of the week, may provide a shot of snow into some parts of the northern plains region, and then that will quickly move on. The second week, this is the start of Thanksgiving week, a brief little warm-up, but I don't think it'll take. I am expecting some cold temperatures cross most of the northern parts of the Plain States by Thanksgiving Day as the cold weather briefly retreats but then likely kind of settles back in. Meanwhile, South America, let's take a look, springtime in uh, South America. We actually have had a few favorable showers moving into uh, parts of Brazil that have needed that for a little bit of crop development. Meanwhile, down in Argentina, conditions do remain dry, which is probably good for planting of uh, crops in uh, that part of the world. So to put things back together again, I do expect a modest warm up here this week, but not one that will really take. Overall, we're still mostly below average temperatures, probably a few more of these little snows, which gives us a pretty fair chance there'll be snow on the ground for the holiday this year. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily, Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. We're excited to bring you the new AgWeek app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. The future of ceramic nozzle technology is here today with the Total Ag Air Induction Turbo Nozzle. The only ceramic triple spray nozzle on the market. Works with all sprayers for better weed control and wheel tracks. They could be the last spray nozzles you'll ever need. I'm really impressed with them. It just amazes me how they work so well. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. 
Make every minute of the growing season count. Schedule your equipment for a genuine Case IH parts and service uptime inspection at Titan Machinery. Our professional service technicians have the training and experience to pinpoint and repair problems before they have a chance to shut you down during the season. Avoid the high cost of in-season downtime. Give yourself the peace of mind knowing your equipment is ready to work. Schedule your equipment today by going to uptime18.com or calling your local Titan Machinery dealer. That's Titan Machinery, providing you with genuine Case IH parts and service. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, uh, more people can eat. Agriculture is an important part of the region's economy, but there's a shortage of high school ag teachers to help prepare kids for a future in agribusiness. Page shows how one town right in the heart of ag country is dealing with the ag teacher shortage. Longtime ag teacher Ted Johnson came out of retirement to give Castleton's program a boost. Now, I'm trying to help out. When the superintendent of Central Cass Schools told former kindred ag teacher Ted Johnson that they were in a fix for an ag teacher this fall in Castleton, Johnson came out of retirement to help. Their alternative was to just either close it or try to put it on as a, you know, a, a video class, which is, you know, no active teacher there. Johnson says there's been a big shortage of ag education graduates in the region, and these programs are vitally important. There's such a rich agricultural history here, and they honestly, sincerely want a strong ag program here. Phenotype is how it looks. The program at Castleton is temporarily cobbled together with a troika of part-time ag teachers after one teacher left in August, but Superintendent Morgan Fornes wants to beef it up for the future. The ag industry has become very um, wide uh, in breadth so that uh, you can get an ag degree and uh, you can enter into ag business, working with farm industry in many shapes and forms. And I think the dollars that uh, somebody can make in those uh, businesses probably exceed what a, a teacher would make. I think the second issue is there's just not as many students going into the teaching field. This would be a report that a farmer would get. Ann Uland is a farmer and part-time ag teacher at Central Cass. She agrees that often people with ag backgrounds are pulled to higher paying ag jobs, but the need for teachers is great. Oh, it's vital here. Um, the Central Cass, Castleton area, ag is so important. It's always been important. We want to keep it going. Marie Hovland graduated from NDSU and went to work as an agronomist, but now she's back at her old school teaching. She's among the first in a new state transition to teaching program designed to bring ag pros into education. The need for the teachers is, is immense, that they are pulling from the private sector and just they have an, that new program to try to get as many teachers as they can. Um, even if they were in the private sector, they can get certified. Students at Central Cass are happy their ag program is strengthening. There's so much changing in the agricultural world right now that, you know, you're learning something new every day yourself. The amount of jobs we have right now for ag is kind of crazy, and I feel like the money is a, a, a really good opportunity as well. In the ag world of expanding career opportunities, there will always be need for teachers. For Ag Week, this is Michael Pates at Castleton, North Dakota. Central Cass is working with instructors at NDSU and the University of Minnesota Crookston to help find a new full-time ag teacher. The bio-industry business is booming and it includes ag. Hear more about it when Ag Week TV continues. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. 
Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Dozens of industry, government, and university experts and students from surrounding states came together for a bio-industry summit in Fargo. This is the fifth year the summit has been held. We try to really look at the whole spectrum of the bio-industry. Uh, sometimes we think of it from a bio-energy standpoint, but there's a lot of things related to bio-products. Michael Chambers grew up in Carrington, North Dakota, and as a sophomore at NDSU, developed technology called Plasma DNA, which became the basis for his company Aldevron, based in Fargo. About 85% of Aldevron's company's activities relate to human health, and the rest involves areas of agriculture. We partner with pharmaceutical companies and agriculture biotech companies like, um, like sort of the Monsantos or Syngentas or the Cargills of the world to, to figure out how to design and, and make large quantities of the biotech products they require to develop their um, innovations. Chambers said he doesn't think edited gene crops will be regulated in the same way as GMO crops, for which DNA out of the species is added. This week's photo of the week comes from Christina Knutson from Lake Park, Minnesota. It's a late October sunrise over their family farm. If you want to see your ag photos on Agweek TV, email it along with the description to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Agweek TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.